This podcast is brought to you by WTOE Radio at TourEyes.org. Cheryl Echeverry of Echeverry and Travel, your one-on-one travel agent, making your travel dreams come true, home of the independent traveler. Whether you're sighted, blind, or disabled, whether you use a cane, guide dog, or sighted guide, Echeverry and Travel will get you there safely. Come and learn more about traveling independently. Come with me, let's go. 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 Hello, everybody. This is Cheryl Echeverria of Echeverria Travel and also the president of the Travel and Tourism Division of the National Federation of the Blind. And welcome to my monthly internet radio show on the WTOE Network. Uh, sponsored by the Northeast Chapter of the National Federation of the Blind in New Jersey. And tonight we have a very special guest, like all my guests are special. We're having Mr. Mark Jones from Walt Disney Parks and Resorts. He's the manager of domestic services for guests with disabilities. And the reason we are having him on tonight, as you know, the National Federation of the Blind is having their... uh, 73rd, I can't believe 73 years, uh, National Convention in Orlando, Florida this year. So we're here to talk about Disney World Parks, the resorts, the rides, uh, some accessibility for all of us to enjoy the parks while we're there. And he's been gracious enough to come on tonight and discuss these uh, great experiences with us tonight. Uh, Also, uh, just want to wish everybody a happy Easter and Passover, whichever ones you guys uh, celebrated this past couple of weeks. We have also have a brand new Pope, Pope Francis, so I'll talk about him a little bit later on as well. And just a friendly reminder, as I mentioned, the 73rd National Convention is coming up. So if you haven't made your reservations at the Rosen Center, please call up and make your $90 deposit. Go to the NFB.org and register for your banquet and registration for the convention. And then sit back and relax and enjoy our convention in July. A couple of things coming up. Uh, On the 13th, I leave with the NFB of New Jersey. We're going to be cruising to Bermuda. And I'll have a report from that when we come back in for the May show. And then we're sailing again for the two days on the Norwegian Breakaway Cruise uh, coming up May 10th through 12th. So we got a very exciting night to discuss a lot of these things. So I'm going to take a five-minute break, and when we come back, we'll bring on Mr. Mark Jones. So stay tuned and enjoy. Don't go anywhere. There will be more show right after these messages. And we are now back. We had a great uh, couple of commercials there. And I am, have a very special guest coming on. Uh, like I said, Mr. Mark Jones uh, from Walt Disney, uh, excuse me, from Disney Parks and Resorts. Uh, he's the manager of domestic services for guests with disabilities. Mark, are you there? Hi, Cheryl. Yes, I am. Thanks for having me on your show. Well, I'm so grateful you came on tonight. I know we've been, the Travel and Tourism Division has been talking with you over the last year or so, and I'm very honored to have you finally on the show to speak to me and to my audience. And before we start talking, remember, people, this is a live show, so to call in and speak to myself or ask a question of Mark Jones, whose picture is now up on the screen, it's one eight eight eight. Five seven two zero one four one, and um, Mark, what I what I normally do with my guests when they first come on, I ask them all about themselves, and uh, 
if you could give us a little one or two minute introduction about who is Mark Jones, uh, how long you've been working with uh, Disney Parks, and what makes you decide to go into the realm of accessibility with the parks themselves. Sure, absolutely, Cheryl. Uh, so, hi, everybody. My name is Mark Jones. Um, I was uh, born and raised in West Hartford, Connecticut. So, Cheryl, not far from you uh, in the uh, state of Connecticut. Um, I um, uh, grew up as a child of deaf parents. So, my parents, my mother and father, are both deaf. I also have a, an older brother who is also deaf. So, growing up, uh, that was uh, really a part of my upbringing, being what we call a CODA, a child of deaf adults. My brother attended the American School for the Deaf in West Hartford. So uh, as a family, we would go and participate in lots of events there uh, with him, various things. So that was sort of my, uh, uh, if you will, introduction into the, uh, the, the disability community. Um, as I uh, grew up, uh, my family relocated to, to Tennessee. Uh, we moved to Knoxville, Tennessee. So I attended high school as well as uh, college in Knoxville at the University of Tennessee. Uh, after graduating, I majored in communications, uh, by the way. Um, uh, oh, while I was uh, at uh, the University of Tennessee, I participated in an internship um, at the Walt Disney World Resort in Florida. I worked at the, uh, at the time, the Disney MGM Studios. I worked at an attraction called the Great Movie Ride, uh, and I worked there for uh, a whole semester. Um, a little bit more personal than that. Actually, during my semester there, I actually uh, met my future wife, uh, working, both of us working at the same location both of us from the University of Tennessee, so kind of a small world thing. Um, when I graduated from uh, college, I um, spent some time living in Nashville, Tennessee, as well as Orlando, Florida. Uh, and uh, in the mid-90s, I relocated to France. I uh, went to work uh, for Disney at the Disneyland Paris Resort, spent almost a year working there in an operational capacity and uh, be, actually became uh, a member of the team that I am on now, which is called Services for Guests with Disabilities, became a member of that team in 1996. So I have been a part of our domestic uh, accessibility efforts since 96 uh, in a couple of different roles. Uh, my initial role within the department focused mainly on the delivery of our sign language services for our guests with hearing disabilities. But from there, uh, grew in my um, levels of responsibility and uh, Today, uh, as uh, Cheryl mentioned, I am the manager of our domestic services for guests with disabilities efforts, supporting both the Walt Disney World Resort in Florida and where I now live, California, I support the Disneyland Resort. So I've been here on the West Coast uh, for about four years now. That, that's awesome. And I have to say, for those that can't see, I actually have when travel agents graduate the Disney College of Knowledge, and Mark would know this, I have my little hat and tassel, and it's actually Mickey ears, so for those that, let me see, we have this camera, if, for those that can't see, I have it here, and I'm holding it, and uh, if you ever decide to become a travel agent, uh, Disney has some really good trainings for people who are travel agents to learn everything about the parks, the cruises, uh, the the resorts, uh, when you graduate, that's a little extra thing that you get besides um, certificates and diplomas. So I got Disney all over my house because besides cruising, we love, we're a big Disney family. So um, the reason we have you on today is, of course, uh, we're talking about people with disabilities, especially the uh, the blind and the deaf community. And it's very interesting that you mentioned that you grew up in a family of people with disabilities. You said both your parents and, and your brother are deaf? Correct. Correct yes. me if I'm wrong? Okay. No, right. So so you come from a family of, of uh, uh, and I'll get a little bit into the uh, deaf clients in a little bit because the NFB has deaf and blind um, members. But uh, pertaining mostly to the Walt Disney World uh, parks, I know that uh, a number of years ago, I believe in 2010, uh, Disney came out with the ATD, uh, the accessible uh, device. Um, is it still called that? And if not, what what is the handheld device that helps people with uh, either blind or or or, or uh, hearing impaired? 
to use around the parks? Um, sure, Cheryl. Actually, the history of the device is even a little bit uh, older than that. Um, we, we had a new generation of the device come out around that time, and we also enhanced um, what the device did. But for the audience, uh, there's a device that we offer that's called Disney's handheld device. Um, it's a, a, probably about four inches by six inches. It's a little bit larger than a smartphone. Um, it is a ruggedized style device, meaning it can uh, experience the elements and be dropped and not break. But the device delivers for our guests, both in Florida and in California, it delivers several different services. Um, two of the services are for guests with hearing disabilities. Um, the device offers a service called handheld captioning, which is an on-screen captioning system for our moving attractions. So, for example, if you were to travel on our Pirates of the Caribbean attraction, who, which is very popular with our guests, as you would travel through the attraction, the, the screen would display in text form all of the dialogue that's happening around you. The second service the device offers is assistive listening. Uh, assistive listening, as many of you know, is an amplification system that, in essence, amplifies the audio in a particular location. So a guest sitting in a particular theater who needed the volume cranked up a little bit, they could have control over that and, and turn up the volume um, uh, on, on their headsets that they would receive with the device. The third service we have on the device, uh, and that's the service for our guests with visual disabilities, is an audio description-based service. The audio description service um, does describe many of our indoor attractions. So we'll use our Pirates of the Caribbean example again. As you're traveling on our Pirates attraction in both Florida and California, you would hear through your headphones a description of all of the visual elements in the attraction. You would hear about Jack Sparrow, and you'd hear about the, the, the village and all of the things happening in the village as you're traveling through. And you would hear this, of course, in addition to the ambient audio that you would be receiving uh, that's just being uh, projected within the, uh, within the scenes themselves. In addition to the indoor audio description, we also have an outdoor version of this description. So it allows you to receive information as you're walking around our parks. So if you were walking around, let's say, on Main Street USA at the Magic Kingdom, as you're walking down Main Street, the device, through GPS and a series of other uh, technology pieces, the device would start providing you information about Main Street. And... Um, you, at that point, have the ability to uh, choose additional information. So in addition to a quick snapshot of a, an audio message that tells you where you are, you as the end user can choose additional information using an audio menu, um, information such as what restaurants are in the area, where the restroom is. Maybe you want to get a, the, the three- or four-minute um, more detailed overview of Main Street. You want to hear about all the architectural features. So that is, is the, the other part of our audio description service. So there's those three separate services that are all delivered, Cheryl, through this device. The device first became available actually in 2005. Oh, cool. Great. Um, I, I know that, um, yeah, I, I've been reading up on, on all the other services. First of all, I love that device. When... Uh, for those that I can actually see, there's some pictures going on. These are actual pictures that my daughter and I took when we were in Disney during um, the Christmas season. And if you get to go in Christmas to either Disneyland or Disney World parks, it's it's more magical that time of year than than the other times of the year. I mean, you go to Disney any day, it's magical. But something about Christmas time, it, it's, you smell the gingerbread in the air and the cookies, and you just get fat from smelling everything. Uh, but I wanted to bring up with, with that device, um, many people know that I, I have not been blind my whole entire life. And when I went to uh, Disney in 2011 with my 23-year-old daughter, so Disney is not just for the little ones, it's for everybody. Um, I went on It's a Small World ride, and that's a very special ride for me because when I was six, my grandparents took us to Walt Disney World, and that was my very first ride. And to actually sit on that ride again and going through that ride, and they describe to you, you're now going through the tunnel, and uh, of course you hear It's a Small World in all languages, but... You hear, oh, the, the children are in Mexico and they're wearing the, these clothes. And above you, there's uh, there's some dolls and different um, 
uh, different country uh, garb that's above you and next to you. And, and I, and tears that came to my eyes and my daughter's like, well, why are you crying for? I said, well, for somebody who hasn't been able to see this since she was, you know, 16 years old, it really made it very enjoyable for me to enjoy the park all over again. So I'm glad they have that there for somebody that myself that ex- has gone again and again and again. Uh, every time I go, I find it more and more enjoyable and more and more accessible to me. Um, pertaining to uh, to signage and other things are, are uh, that I noticed on the signs it, at certain parts of, of the park that the signs are in Braille. Do they give out the um, the maps in Braille at all at guest services or anything like that? Uh, we actually have a couple of, of items that are available in Braille, Cheryl. Um, the, the first of which, we do have a Braille guide. It is uh, printed in both large print as well as Braille, and it provides an overview of each of our parks. Um, the location that we keep, by the way, a lot of our equipment items that guests can borrow for a day um, is our guest relations area. Guest relations is generally located near the front of each of our theme parks. Um, the Braille guide that guest relations can, can loan to you for the day um, it's, uh, it's your standard 11 by 11 and a half format, uh, and it does have a lot of detail about each of the individual lands within the park and, and, and does get into some detail about the attractions themselves. Um, it has a $25 refundable deposit, so there's no cost for it. It's just we just ask for a, a small deposit. Um, in addition to the Braille Guide or the large print version of the Braille Guide, we also have stationary Braille maps, and those maps are strategically located in our parks. Every park has a minimum of two of these maps. One of those maps is located either inside of our guest relations lobby area or just outside. And then we have a second location very close to the center of our parks where we have what we call a tip board. And the tip board is staffed by a guest relations uh, employee who can also answer questions. But the map um, is oriented so north is north. And it has um, not only a visual element so, so sighted guests can use this map, but it also has an overlay, and the overlay is a Braille and raised characters overlay. So the map um, is able to provide someone with a visual disability um, an idea of the orientation of the park and where the individual areas are, as well as what the key landmarks are in each of of those particular lands. Um, We are also currently working on a portable tactile map, so a portable style map in that 11 by 11 and a half format, excuse me, that a guest would be able to take with them if they chose, that would provide um, a tactile representation of each land. So you would be able to get a sense of uh, the details within a particular land, like adventure land or fantasy land, and know sort of where things are in the land, so you can start thinking about how you want to plan the rest of your time. Very cool, very cool. Um, Many uh, people such as myself use guide dogs and um can you i mean uh can you explain where where the dogs are allowed to go where where they're you know what what's the policy with uh relief areas um any particular parts of the park that the uh i mean i know there's a list of rides that uh, especially the roller coaster theme rides and stuff that uh that are recommended uh, not to bring the dogs on, and I wouldn't bring my dog on a roller coaster anyway, but uh, can you go into a little bit of the accessibility with with service animals at the parks? Uh, Absolutely, Cheryl. So, of course, well, uh, service animals are welcomed guests at all of our Disney properties. Um, Guests who are bringing service animals with them, obviously we're going to ask that they remain on on a harness or on a leash at all times and under the control of their owner. Um, Service animals are welcomed on most of our attractions and in most of our shows. Um, Those locations where we may not permit a service animal would be, as Cheryl mentioned, um, things like roller coasters where there's a safety uh, mechanism, whether it's a a lap belt or some kind of harness, and it just has a safety element that it's just not a good place for the animal to be. Um, At those locations, we actually have a couple of options for the owners. One option is to have a member of the party remain um, with the animal. Um, and then when the rest of the party comes back uh, from their ride, that person who was with the animal can immediately ride at that moment and not have to wait. We call that a rider swap or a rider switch. Additionally, though, we have uh, an enhanced service that we've uh, started offering here in the past few months um, of having a portable kennel. So at each of those locations where um, service animals are not permitted to ride, you can ask for 
the cast member or the employee to set up a portable kennel for your animal. Um, and you can place your animal in that kennel, which is kept right there near the load or unload area, and your entire party can ride together. So that is another enhancement that we've done very recently. We've done very recently. Um, service animal relief areas. We have actually moved all of our service animal relief areas, uh, what we call on stage. Previously at the Walt Disney World property, we had our relief areas backstage. So they were kind of behind a door or kind of behind some things that were in areas more reserved for our employees. Um, we've moved them on stage just really to make them more convenient for our guests, easier for guests to locate and be able to utilize. So we've done that, and, and now if you were to visit any of our properties domestically, you will find those relief areas um, on, on stage, multiple locations, by the way, in each park, and they are designated with signage as well as uh, they are in, indicated in many pieces of information, including our stationary Braille maps. Uh, it's also in our Braille guides. So um, uh, they, they, they're, they're much more obvious, I guess, is what I'm saying, Cheryl. Okay, and there's also in, in kind of like, a, I know it's off of the parks, but it's part of the Disney property that there is a, a kennel where guests can actually uh, kennel their dog for the day or so if they're going with the family and they want to leave the dog in, in, in the kennel. Uh, I, I believe this this. Yeah, I forgot the name of it, but there is a service like that as well, correct? That's correct, Cheryl. There is a, there is a central kennel location at the Walt Disney World property, so that kennel services the entire property in Florida, which is, if you've never been before, by the way, it's a very large property in Florida. There is also a kennel at the Disneyland Resort, um, and those kennels are full service. They're able to keep animals overnight. They're able to do uh, some feeding, etc. They they do um, ask that the owners come and walk the dogs when necessary. Um, but uh, they're, they're full service kennels if there's a need for that kind of thing. And uh, do, uh, do the guests uh, attending the theme parks have to be guests at the resorts, or no. can they just use the kennel for that afternoon or the time they're at the park? That's correct, Cheryl. You don't have to be staying on the Disney property to utilize the kennel. You can, if you're staying elsewhere in the area, you can still utilize the kennel service. That's great to know. Um, now that we've basically gone through the people that are, are blind, uh, I've been I've been doing some reading up, and uh, you do offer uh, American Sign Language in, in interpreters uh, to. I guess you have to let the the parks, uh, at least your reservationists or something, know at least a week in advance of your attending the the resort. Well, we've been offering our sign language interpretation uh, for, for quite a few years now at, at both properties. Um, for Walt Disney World, we actually have a schedule that um, we interpret based off of, and that schedule provides interpretation literally every day of the week at at least one theme park. So, for example, every Monday and every Thursday, we interpret at the Magic Kingdom. Every Tuesday and every Saturday, we interpret at Disney's Animal Kingdom. Every Sunday and every Wednesday, we're at Disney Hollywood Studios. And then every Saturday, I'm sorry, every Friday, we're at Epcot. So every day of the week, we're in a different theme park. And on those designated days, there is a schedule of events that are interpreted. And the kinds of things that we interpret are mainly our stage shows, things that have a lot of um, characters and a lot of different voices that are live in nature. So those are the bulk of the things on our schedule. Each park has between five and seven locations, by the way, that are interpreted. Um, and then in addition to that, um, we can provide interpretation for um, things that are sort more like special requests. Let's say there's a party that would like to go to our hoop de doo review dinner show or maybe the Polynesian Luau dinner show. We would be able to arrange interpreters for those venues. We just need um, some notice in order to do that. And previously, we have been able to do deaf-blind tactile interpreting. Um, it's not a problem for us to do that kind of thing. Obviously, since that's more of a one-on-one -on -one type service, we would like to know of the guest's request uh, approximately seven days in advance, and then from there we'd be able to work with them individually. Right. And for my guests that are listening, everybody, of course, assumes that uh, 
when you when you're speaking about Walt Disney World in Orlando, uh, they think either Epcot or the Magic Kingdom. And I'm just going to step back a little bit uh, on describing it. Uh, Walt Disney World Resort is in Florida. Disneyland is in Anaheim, California. And for us, uh, for the next six years, we'll be at the Rose and Shingle Resort in Orlando, Florida. Um, Disney World has four theme parks, which is uh, the Magic Kingdom, of course, uh, Epcot. They have the MGM Studios and they have Animal Kingdom. Plus, there's two water parks. There's the Espen Wide World of Sports. There's Miniature Golf, Golf, Water Sports, you name it. Disney has it, and they have some of the greatest entertainment in the world there, as well as uh, Downtown Disney. Plus, they have uh, the the value, moderate, and the luxury resorts as well. So, um, the, they include uh, transportation when you're staying uh, on on property to all the uh, different themes, theme parks, either by bus, boat, or uh, the monorail. And uh, all these, all these uh, especially the monorail and the buses and stuff, they are wheelchair accessible to to people that are in wheelchairs of course, and their uh, scooters and all that. Plus, if you need to uh, rent wheelchairs or scooters, people like myself can can rent them for you and have them at the at your resort when you arrive. And uh, you just leave it with the uh, bell captains when you leave, or you can actually rent wheelchairs and scooters for the day at the actual theme park you're you're attending so if you you're listening to mark and, and he says well we have interpreters on such and such a date these parks are i mean even for myself and nelson when we go you want to spend at least one day at each park i mean there's so much to see and do at each park you, you just can't get it through all in one day so you need to pace yourself and uh I mean, if sight, a blind sighted, uh, not disabled, uh, it, it's a wonderful experience going to the Walt Disney World theme parks and resorts. So, okay, and um, we're we're coming to the end of our half hour, and I want to say thank you to Mark for coming on today, and we will be seeing you in Orlando on July 1st with some other people from the Travel and Tourism Division, and uh, I really appreciate you giving up your time this evening to, to come on and speak with me. You're quite welcome, Cheryl. Thank you for having me. Good night, and, and we hope you have a nice uh, the rest of the holiday season for you and your family. We'll be back in about five minutes to take a break, and when we come back, I'll be discussing uh, the National Convention, uh, the the cruise we're going on it, to Bermuda, and other things going on with the National Federation of the Blind. So stay tuned. We'll be with you shortly. Hi, I'm Keith Zally, your announcer here at WTOE Radio Network. We're going to take a little bit long with this break to save our files for podcasts. So don't go anywhere because there will be more of the Estraveri Travel Show in just a bit. Come with me, let's go. so happy to have Mark Jones on with Disney. So, Mark, if you're still listening, thank you so much for coming on tonight. He's He's been a real big help with the NFB, uh, with our travel and tourism division. Anything that I've been needing help with, he's had uh, conference calls with us before. And, in fact, he's taking myself and a couple other board members uh, while we're in Orlando for the convention for a tour of uh, of the Magic Kingdom this year, and especially with the new expansion of Fantasyland, so that others can test out the equipment and and um, learn what I know about Disney myself. I mean, it's easy for me to talk about it, but to have somebody else go through and enjoy it as well, you know, that that's an important thing as well. So we'll have a, a big report for you guys. And if you're coming to the National Convention, uh, Mark will be one of our, our guests 
at the Travel and Tourism Division meeting, which will be happening on July 2nd between 1 and 4 p.m. And uh, when we get closer to the convention, I'll, I'll give you more notes of who will be speaking, but Mark will be one of the people that will be at our at our meeting this year. So look for it in your uh, Braille monitor for the agenda. If you'd like to call in and speak to me, uh, the number is one 572 141 And uh, my name is Cheryl Echeverria, and I own Echeverria Travel. So if you need help getting to National Convention, you can give me a call at 631-456-5394 or uh, any other travel needs you might have. So uh, you can reach us also at reservations at echeveriatravel.com. Um, I'd like to, uh, before I go on tonight, I'd like to remind everybody that the Echeveria Travel Show, as well as Through Our Eyes with Joe Ruffalo, On the Bright Side with, with Jane and Jerry, and Looking Good Without Looking with Linda and Joanna, um, all of these shows are... Uh, are taken care of by the uh, Northeast chapter of the NFB of New Jersey by by donations by you. If you like what we're doing, please um, send a donation to the NFB of New Jersey at 254 Spring Street, Bloomfield, New Jersey, 07003. I'm sorry, Spruce Street. Thank you, ladies. S-P-R-U-C Street. And uh, make checks uh, in the memo to the uh, through our eyes, uh, and we'll make sure that it goes directly to paying and and uh, uh, funding our radio show because we can't do it without you listeners to continue doing our shows. Um, also, just a shout out before uh, in case I run out of time. Directly following me is a show called Stepping Forward with Tamara White. She's a clinical psychologist, and she'll be talking about um, spring cleaning uh, and uh, mental health, uh, just making sure everybody's happy and getting ready for spring. So directly following me, you're listening to Tamara. And also on April 10th, Janie and Jerry will be talking about the new board site and discussing uh, the stories on friendship. So we're all, all of the hosts here are all into spring and happiness and friendship. So we want to make sure that everybody else is enjoying the spring, spring weather. It's getting warm around and it's, it's really good outside. So get out and enjoy the spring. Um, as I said earlier, national convention is coming up in Orlando, Florida. We'll be there for the next six years, but remember, Come and enjoy this year. There'll be 2,000 plus people there at the convention. You meet people from all around the world that come as well from Barbados, Jamaica, Australia. And you learn something new every every year. And uh, you, you'll really enjoy yourself. So come and be part of the, part of the family. Um, some travel news. Um, many people have been hearing about uh, the cruise industry going on. I want to let you know that it's it's very safe. I mean, uh, people sometimes have issues with cars and buses and other things. Cruising is still the most popular form of transportation out there. Um, people do have one preference over another of which cruise line they like the best, but um, it's still the best form of packing and unpacking and waking up in a different location every single day and enjoying the part of the world. Um, as I mentioned, we are, we, meaning myself and Nelson and uh, Max the Guide Dog and the NFB of New Jersey is leaving on April 13th through the 18th to enjoy a five-day cruise to Bermuda on Royal Caribbean Explorer the Seas. We're all going to have a chance to throw Joe Ruffalo and Jerry Marino off the ship. And, oh, we can't wait. Oops, you didn't hear that. Oh, darn it. I'm sure we're all laughing about that. I mean, we can't wait to enjoy the cruise ourselves. Uh, while we're in Bermuda, we're going to be also meeting with the president of the Society of the Blind, Amanda Marshall. Uh, and we'll be having lunch with her to discuss the 
if we if the National Federation of the Blind can do any kind of service to help Bermuda with uh, accessibility or education or anything else down there. So we're be doing a little fellowship and and uh, helping out anywhere we can besides enjoying our cruise. Um, as mentioned also in May, uh, you you may have heard or seen on your TV this new cruise from Norwegian Cruise Line called the Breakaway. And no, it does not have the actual skyline on top of the ship. For those that have sight uh, in the commercials, uh, Norwegian Cruise Line has, uh, I guess, Photoshop uh, the New York City skyline on the ship. Uh, it's not on there. It's just for commercial purposes, but it is painted with the Statue of Liberty on the hull of the ship by Peter Max. And it has Jeffrey Zarkarian from Food Network. One of the Iron Chefs has his own restaurants on the ship. And the uh, Rockettes are the godmother of the sea. And uh, there's so many things to do on that ship. It's the sister ship to the Norwegian Epic. That is out of Miami, and she's going to be heading to Europe. And the new getaway is coming out in May, and that ship is going to be dedicated just for Miami with all Florida-related decorations and everything. But the breakaway, Nelson and I, my darling husband and I, are going on the two-day inaugural, uh, May 10th through the 12th, and we'll give you all the highlights when we come back. We're also going to be doing, if you're in the New York, New Jersey area, on July 28th. And I can only bring 10 people with me right now. But if you're interested in going and you're with the NFB of New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, Pennsylvania, and you want to go on a ship tour, which means we get to go on the ship, we get to see all the rooms and all the entertainment areas, and we get to have lunch, and we get to give feedback to the Norwegian Cruise Line. I've, I've been doing this since 2010 I'm on almost all the sh their ships here that go out of, out of New York. And every time we, we give feedback, uh, they have been putting improvements there. They've been doing Braille menus. Uh, the Pride of America, which is their weekly ship out of Hawaii, was just recently brought into dry dock. And that's, that just means they take it... Uh, from not sailing anymore and they put in new rugs and curtains and all that stuff and they put in new braille signage and uh, other things going on that we have asked the cruise line to do so every time they bring a new either a new ship out like they're doing with the breakaway or they're bringing a shop ship into dry dock to do upgrades they are upgrading their elevators with with the voices uh, that, so that way you know what floor you're on. If they didn't have Braille on a certain elevator in the past, they're doing that. So, um, you know, a lot of a lot of improvements have been going on. Uh, so remember, I'm not just a travel agent. I'm out there advocating for us to make sure that, you know, blind, sighted, disabled, not disabled, that everybody can go and enjoy wherever they're planning on traveling to. Um, another thing coming up, uh, I would I would be a last. Uh, I am the president of the Travel and Tourism Division. Uh, in the past, I've mentioned that we are doing a trip to to Vegas and the Canyon states of uh, Nevada, Arizona, and Utah, October 9th through the thirteenth. We're looking for you to come with us. It's a fundraiser for our division. I mean, we're travel and tourism, and we decided that we want to do a trip every year. This is our first trip. We have about 14 people going. We, oh, I got Jerry Marino from On the Bright Side on the phone. Hey, Jerry, you there? I'm here. Welcome to Cheryl Lecheveria's Travel Show. How are you tonight? I am great. I can't wait to see you in a couple of days. I'm so excited. Yeah, it's going to be fun, but I wanted to tell you, Cheryl, you made me almost want to... Uh, with Mr. Jones there, get a, you know, hop on on board something and get down to Disney. I mean that that sounded great. It didn't it. I mean they're always up. They're always doing and upgrading something. I mean, like I was saying when I first listened to that GPS system on that small world ride and able to enjoy it and and go through the haunted mansion. Man, you can't see it, but boy, you just 
when you're going through that, you just get all the chills that you're actually enjoying and try try to make out what everything is. But it does. It's just so awesome. It really is. So I can't wait to go in, you know, in in uh, July. And then Nelson and I are heading down there in, in November. So if you and Madeline want to join us in November, you know, you're more than welcome to come. Yeah, we'll have to think about that because I didn't schedule enough time to do do justice uh, with them. Um, and by the way, thank you for the uh, help with the airfare. I got very good airfare through your uh, travel agency, commercial, commercial. Um, oh, thank you, sir. But uh, but I I, um, I I did have a question for you about our um, about um, uh, cruises in general. Now I know that our our tipping is included in the um, in our uh, fare. Right, right. But Correct. is it That's acceptable to tip the the steward that takes care of your stateroom anyway, or should you not do it? Should you do it, or what, what no, are your, your, your it, thoughts? Well, we always do. We always do it extra because you got to realize a lot of these people are not from the U.S. They have families back at home, and yeah, everybody they all share the tips. But if they go above and beyond, I mean, just like at your hotel, if you think the 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 they're taking excellent care of you. Sure, you, there's, they're not going to say no. And I think it's if they're doing a great job, definitely give something extra if you feel they deserve it. Yeah, because I've always thought that the people who are helping us, especially like at a hotel, most likely are are close to minimum wage. Um, you know, and, and they could always use an extra. But um, we are we are excited. I was able to um, uh, after after a fashion, not not problem with the website but problem with my printer i was able to print my my uh, um, uh sailing pass is it called you know i did that that is correct yes you know and 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 to show you how paranoid i am i imaged it and i and i i um i put it i'm going to put it on my iphone and carry it with me just in case for some reason that uh that paper is not available but uh i made i made uh, make sure I had that, but um, I just wanted to say that was a v- excellent, excellent uh, first half. I'm looking forward to um, to the cruise and, and Orlando, and um, and uh, good luck with the rest of your show tonight. Well, before we let you go, do you want to give a little uh, info about your show coming up next week? Well, our show next week, um, due to popular demand, one of the guest hosts will not be available. <laughs> one of the hosts will not be available. No. Uh, I'll be traveling. Oh, that's so right. You're heading up to New Jersey. Guest okay. host. Trish will be there. Mm-hmm. And uh, they're going to go over uh, the things you mentioned. And uh, I might get a chance to call in or not. I, I don't know. See how, how, we're, how we're doing with our traveling. But um, we're taking the Amtrak in. That's a long haul. Mm-hmm. But um, So I'll miss that one. The next one will be in May. And... Um, after we'll be talking about our cruise, I, I, I would most likely would think so. But, um, you know, it's every second Wednesday on the bright side with uh, Janie and Jared. So, well, I always listen in. So, the 800-888-572-0141 is for every one of our shows. So, if, if you don't call in to speak to me, at least call in to speak to Jerry and Janie. Or, or Linda and Joanna, or of course, uh, Joe Ruffalo, who will uh, have his show the third week, and Linda Thomas and J.D. Bacon have theirs the last Wednesday of the month. So every Wednesday, you have one of us from the NFB hosting a great show. We have a great lineup, so listen in, and, and please send in your donations so we can keep this radio station going. That's so we right. look forward that, to seeing you and Madeline on the 13th. 572 <laughs> Exactly. Please give us a call. Exactly. Okay, Cheryl, I'll see you in a few days. Yes, we will. I'm looking forward to it. You have All a right. great day. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So that's those. Jerry's one of our WTOE uh, host family. Um I'm looking forward to maybe have Linda Thomas on my show uh, in the coming months. In fact, she's going on the breakaway in June, so we'll have you no, know, we'll have to discuss that when she gets back. And uh, but getting back to the the Florida, the Orlando, the the our trip to uh, Las Vegas and the canyons of the Midwest. Come in and join us. It's a five day bus trip. 
where uh, we stay at Bally's Resorts the first day. We go to uh, the Grand Canyon. We go to Hoover Dam. We go to the Navajo Indian uh, Reservation. We go to uh, Route 66. We go to Bryce and Zion Cannons. So come along and contact me at 631-456-5394. It is a dedicated trip for everybody. You don't have to be blind to come with us, but uh, we do have a wheelchair accessible bus. There are payment plans available. And from there, we'll see where we want to go next year. Uh, So give us a call and we'll try to set you up with the destinations you'd like to go. Uh, We're also doing a, and this just started, we are doing a uh, trip to Ireland. Echeverry Travel is doing a Mother's Day trip to Ireland uh, in 2014. It's going to be May 8th through the 13th. So if you're interested, also give us a call. It went out in my e-newsletter. So if anybody's interested in either taking mom with you, or just a great week to visit Ireland for the first time. Uh, it, it's really a great place to visit. I've sent many of my clients there. They're very hands-on. You can bring the dog with you. If you don't want to bring the dog, they have a lot of uh, headsets so you can listen to what's going on. Uh, the museums and stuff are going to have a lot of hands-on experiences. Uh, do an Irish jig, eat at an uh, Irish pub go to a medieval show, uh, and just enjoy the time we are in Ireland. So if you're interested in going, give us a call on that as well. Um, So getting back to the NFB convention, again, I was stating that uh, $90 to put your deposit down, $79 a room for doubles and triples. Uh, I forgot there is another price out there, but it's from July 1st. Uh, the banquet is on the 6th, so it's from Sunday to Sunday. You want to fly in on the 30th and leave on the 7th. If you haven't had your Amtrak, airfare, or any other transportation done, give us a call, and we'll be glad to help you. Uh, let's see what else is going on with the... Oh, yes, I wanted to mention... Even, why, why did I bring up Pope Francis earlier? Well, people love going to Italy and you're going to Rome and you want to go to Vatican City, which is right in Rome. And uh, I was reading in the paper the other day or listening on on Newsline that the Pope actually uh, met a blind person with a guide dog and he blessed the guide dog. And uh, when he did his first Easter Mass, he went out in the Pope mobile and was hugging and kissing the not just everybody, but people with disabilities. And and, uh, he's a very hands-on, friendly uh, man, Pope Francis, similar to Pope John Paul. And if if you haven't had a chance to go to to Italy and go to Vatican, and uh, and, um, the the Pope does a a service every Wednesday uh, while he's in Vatican City. So, you know, it's an experience that people should do once in their lifetime, uh, Jewish, uh, Christian, Muslim, whichever religion you are. It, it's a very, um, very heartfelt and, and a great event to witness while you're in Italy. So that's, that's why I brought him up at that time. Um, other things going on around travel is that, um, let's see, in the travel world, uh, Yes, yes, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, Beautiful, accessible Barbados. Uh, Barbados is one of those countries that come to the NFB convention every year. They're looking to come again this year, and they will be hopefully speaking at the travel and tourism meeting. That's another person that's coming. Uh, Senator Carrie Ann Othell, and uh, she's just arranging her schedule so she could be with us. Beautiful Accessible Barbados is part of the Tourism Board, and they make sure that uh, uh, it's accessible in Barbados for everybody, whether blind, deaf, wheelchair. They they are very hands-on with uh, people with disabilities in Barbados. I also recently had an update from my people with the Jamaica Tourism Board. 
You can now bring your guide dogs into Jamaica, but only through the cruise lines. Uh, the, you cannot bring the dogs in through the airports as of yet. Uh, but if you're cruising and your cruise does stop in Jamaica, you can bring your dog into Jamaica. Uh, you do have to get a permit uh, application from uh, the Department of Husbandry through the Agri- Department of Agriculture. It is not a free permit as some of the other countries have in the past. It's about $37, and it's a big list of things you need to do before bringing your dog into Jamaica through a cruise line, um, such as making sure you have the updated rabies, um, rabies, uh, all the other uh, shots, make sure your dog is microchipped. Um, uh, they may ask for uh, other things from your vet. Make sure if you're going that you get either look it up online or contact your local travel agent to get you that permit. And you also have to submit it to the cruise line as well. So when when myself or the cruise line is asking you to fill out an access form, it pertains to the to your health as well as the um, the needs of your guide dog. So so just remember that we're not doing it to say, you know, oh, I've never been asked these things before and this and that. So um, when when you're traveling and we ask you for these certain information, uh, we just ask that, you know, humor us so we can make your travel better for you, whether you need Braille or you need a uh, ASL interpreter or you need a wheelchair scooter or just to have a, a box for your guide dog to go to the bathroom or the proper paperwork. I'm always going to go over certain things every show. So that way, if if you're a new listener, you'll you'll have this information at, at your fingertips. Uh, we're coming to the end of the show. Uh, another two minutes. And I just want to say thank you to all those who have supported Echeveria Travel since June of last year. It's coming up to our first anniversary. And I'd like to say thank you to Joe Ruffalo and the Northeast chapter of the NFB in New Jersey for allowing the Echeveria Travel Show to, to continue to bring you the this inf- very informative, fun information. Also, if you're listening and you want to be a guest on my show, you don't have to be a supplier. You don't have to be somebody in the travel industry. We want to listen to you for, you know, half an hour, 10, 15 minutes about your travel experience because you may change the life of other blind or disabled people that never thought that they could travel in the past and would love to hear your experiences. So remember, whether it's traveling outside your door, taking the bus to grandma's house, taking the Amtrak to a state or national convention, or do an experience that you never thought of. I, my st- my chapter president has actually water skied, and I keep te- teasing David Steyer about it. And if you guys know David Steyer, uh, he he tries a lot of things in life, and I, I'm in awe of him because there's a lot of things I wouldn't do. But we're coming to the end of the show, and uh, just giving you my number again, 631-456-5394, reservations at echeverriatravel.com. And if you missed the show tonight, it's on my website, probably be up there next week. Stay tuned for the May show. You'll hear all the updates from uh, the Bermuda experience. So take care and enjoy and God bless. The Echeverra Travel Show is brought to you by Echeverra Travel, home of the independent traveler since 2009, specializing in worldwide destinations for the blind community. For more information on Echeverra Travel, call Cheryl at 631-456-5394 or email her at reservations at echeverratravel.com. All words, ideas, and contents expressed on this show are those of Cheryl Echeverra and not necessarily those of the National Federation of the Blind, the Northeast New Jersey Chapter, or the WTOE Internet Radio Network. Until next time, I'm Keith Zally. The 
previous WTOE radio podcast is a commercial-free version of our live broadcast brought to you every Wednesday evening starting at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time at thru, T-H-R-U, ourize.org.